Thank you, Nandia. I welcome everyone again to the call. My name is Titi Olubajo, and I will be leading prayers on the topic, Unleashing Kingdom Power. Unleashing Kingdom Power. Holy Spirit, run your show. Take over the words of my mouth. Communicate it as life to every hearer. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's rejoice into the presence of our Heavenly Father. To rejoice means to have a melody in your heart. It's to literally hop and skip into the presence of your Father. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Bless his holy name. Psalm 103, Psalm 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Every part of me cooperates in worship this morning. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. And forget not his benefits. He forgives all our iniquities. He heals all our diseases. He redeems our life from destruction. Let's worship God for the forgiveness and the healing we have received. The forgiveness and the healing we have received without which we would have suffered eternal condemnation. We will have suffered eternal destruction and damnation. Oh, Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you because you forgave the inexcusable in us, which in return gives us the power and also the responsibility to forgive the inexcusable in others. 
Lord, we thank you because it's only a perfect love that can do this. We thank you for that which you have given unto us in the form of healing and forgiveness. Verse 4 continues that he crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. You and I, a crown is a symbol of power, authority, honor. He chose to honor. Let's thank him for crowning the church, his bride, with loving kindness. He chose to honor us with his loving kindness. Oh, Father, we thank you. We thank you because you honor your church with tenderness and consideration. You look at us and you knew us fully. Thank you for the tender mercies which we enjoy daily. Thank you for your mercies, which are renewed each morning towards us. Oh, bless your holy name. We worship you, oh God. Verse five, I love so much. It says, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle. Lord, we just worship you. We thank you. Thank him. Think back to the moments where we have been revived and renewed, even at the cusp of discouragement, even at the verge of giving up, the ways that God has shown up and shown up for us. It's miraculous. Those 11th hour miracles, those coincidences, those like, ah, that was close. Those close calls. Let's thank God. Those God moments. Let's bless his holy name because everything was divinely orchestrated by him. He causes all things to work together for our good. We thank him for every time he has stepped in, every time he has caused a satisfaction for every longing of our soul, no matter what, how long it may have taken because he does not operate in our own time he operates outside of time all things are made beautiful in his time and lord we thank you we thank you and we bless your holy name for every way you have made things wonderful and lovely for us for every way that you have arranged events to work out in our favor for every way that you have changed the hearts of kings and rulers and those in authorities to remember and favor us father we return to say thank you verse 6 says the lord executes righteousness he is the executor of righteousness and justice and justice for all who are oppressed. Let us just begin to rejoice in him. We have been seeing a wave of joy, justice moving across the nations, moving across the church, ushering in a new era of accountability, ushering in a new era of fairness, those that have been quiet before are now speaking up. And it's only by the mercy of God. It's only by God, the executor of justice and righteousness, that this is coming to light. So let's get back on our knees again to worship our maker. Let us thank him for every, every wrong he has made right. Let us thank him for every wrong that he has made right. We might not be where we ought to be in terms of the racial and political tensions, but a lot has happened last year and even this year also. Let us thank him for the new era that is washing over the church, that is washing away, that is washing away religion and bringing in relationship, that is washing away ethnic di discrimination, that is washing away denominational divides and is bringing Bringing a true fellowship, a true oneness of faith, a true oneness of mind. Father, we worship you. We praise your holy name. We're so grateful to you, Daddy. We bow before your throne because we see your handiwork. Verse 7, verse 7, verse 7, we're worshiping God. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. You may not be feeling so hot spiritually right now, but let us praise him because you are here. We are here. 
And it's a testament that he has made himself known unto us, or he is making himself known unto us. Let us praise him. Think about it. This is the God in whom all things were created, things in heaven, things on the earth, both visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authority, this same God has made himself known to you, to me. Oh, we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, because it pleases you, the ruler of all things, to make yourself known to we, to we as we are, as we are, just as we are. We thank you, oh God. Verse 8 to 14 says, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in mercy. For he will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as, as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. Hallelujah. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Oh, I love the next verse. He says, as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame and remembers that we are dust. He looks at us and says, oh, child, oh, child, oh, father, we thank you. We thank you. Let us thank him because he has not dealt with us according to our works. You have not dealt with us according to what we deserve. Even on our best days, on our most holy days, the Bible says our righteousness is as a filthy rag before him. Many times our heart is reading with offense, yet your mercy lovingly corrects us, lovingly corrects us removing that same iniquity far, far, far away from us, giving us newness of mind, giving us newness of purpose. No matter how many times the righteous fall it, your mercy bring us back up again. And Father, for that, we say thank you. Finally, we want to thank the Lord. Verse 22 says, for he, verse 22 says, bless the Lord, all his works. In all the places of his dominion, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. If you've seen nothing worthy of praise, you ought to praise God on this note. You are the work of his hands and your temple is the place of his dominion. Oh, Father, we just thank you. EPR is the work of your hand and the place of your dominion. And we return collectively with gratitude with our hearts. We return to give you a praise because only you deserve all the glory, all the honor, and all the praises. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Amen. So we're looking at creating an atmosphere for his power. Creating an atmosphere for his power is the first bullet point we're looking at. Our overall topic is unleashing kingdom power, but we want to look at creating an atmosphere. Because before we're able to unleash this power, his power, we have to create an atmosphere for it. I wasn't scheduled to lead this morning. Um, the lead was confirmed in January, but on Sunday, um, she unfortunately communicated to us that she couldn't be here. Nandia and Kemi Shabi uh, scrambled around and found a lead for Wednesday. The lead was confirmed on Wednesday and by Thursday evening that had fallen through. I don't know what God is trying to do this morning, but I'm sent here to remind us that the presence of the Lord is everything, everything and more to a believer. John 15 verse 5 says, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. 
For without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can do nada. Acts 17, 28 drive, drives this home even further. It says, for in him, in Christ, we live and move and exist. Two things. Nothing we are doing today, no matter how skilled we are at it, that he couldn't be doing through another person. Secondly, if God is the very essence of a believer, then without his life or presence, we are reduced to mere blind watchmen. Blind watchmen. David got the picture right. The psalmist got the picture right in Psalm 63 verse 1, which says, you God are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and patched land where there is no water. My whole being longs for you in a dry and patched land. And just in case we, we get confused, scripture puts it there, where there is no water. If you are not flat on your face yet, I'm not sure what else could, could, could bring you to your knees this morning. Because what the psalmist is saying here is that in a dry and patched land where there is no water, I do not long for the water my flesh needs, but for your presence my spirit needs. Why? Because his presence, his life is everything to a believer. Let us pray. Let us pray. Let us pray. Let us pray this morning. There is a danger in having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. There is a danger. There is that danger in having a form of godliness, but not having the life of God, the presence of God backing up our activities because we are ever learning, ever striving, but not able to attain, ever active, but not being productive nor fruitful. This morning, we are panting for a revival. Let us cry unto God. Say, Father, we are panting for the life of God in the church and the nations again. Say, Father, 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 resurrect your life in your church. <laughs> resurrect your life in your church and the nations again. Oh, God, let your life flow through us again. Make your presence a priority to us again. Let us be focused on what matters again. Let us not be busy, but guilty. Lord, bring our desires in complete alignment. In complete alignment with yours, oh God. Lord, whatever it is that is a form of distraction, we stop chasing shadows in the name of Jesus Christ. We want and we crave the manifestation and the unleashing of kingdom power. So Lord, let your presence, let your presence be with us wherever we go, whatever we do. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Secondly, koinonia creates an atmosphere for his power. Koinonia creates an atmosphere for his power. Power comes from fellowship. What are we talking about? We're talking about fellowship. We're talking about unity. Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. Every single one of them. Nobody was missing. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit 
and began to speak in other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance. Manifestation came when they were gathered together in one place with one heart, one purpose, and one expectation. This is not a one-man show. <laughs> it's not. We need each other. God distributes gifts to everyone to do what? To lighten the load. We want to pray. We want to pray against the very obvious threat to Konyonia, which is strife, strife, strife. James 3 verse 16, for wherever there is jealousy or envy and contention, rivalry, selfish amb ambition, there will also be confusion, unrest, disharmony, rebellion, and all sorts of evil and vile practices. Quite simply put, wherever there is strife, expect disunity, which is a threat to fellowship. Expect misunderstanding. Expect chaos and confusion. Our differences should not pose a threat to Kononia. Let us pray. We're going to pray. Ephesians 4.3, it says, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace in the bond of peace hey it starts with us it starts with us we're going to pray that we're going to say father search me reveal to me any darkness in me that has fueled disunity in the body of christ reveal to me where I have been complicit. Remember Ephesians 4.3 says endeavoring. Endeavoring means you make efforts. You keep trying. You keep trying. Because if you are passive, you are complicit. You are complicit. Pray that the Lord will reveal, reveal, reveal. Show me. Father, in the name of Jesus, reveal to me. Any darkness inside of me that has swelled disunity in the body of Christ and begin to uproot, begin to take it out, begin to remove, begin, I lay myself on your table, begin to give me a newness of heart, begin whatever, maybe something easily irritates you, maybe some, maybe, maybe certain words are triggers onto you, maybe you have been the one saying certain things, doing certain things. Um, behaving a certain way that is contributing to disunity in the body of Christ. Let the Lord reveal it unto you today. Call our Lord reveal this truth unto me today that I may begin to adjust my ways. You may be thinking that, oh, you know what? Maybe I'm not, I'm, I, 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 I'm a lover of peace, I'm a, and, but I don't like confrontation. You might be saying that to yourself. But whenever you notice tension between your sisters, Tension between colleagues, tension between leaders. You do nothing. You do nothing. Again, if you're passive, you're also complicit. So we're going to pray that Lord help me. Help me take an active role in resolving conflict whenever I sense tension. Help me for the sake of Konyonia, for the sake of the manifestation and the unleashing of kingdom power. Help me, Lord Jesus, not to be complicit. Give me the courage to speak up. Give me the courage to take an active role. You have said in your word that we are to endeavor to keep the peace. We are to endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. So we are to labor towards peace. Whatever it takes, oh God, make us committed to being a peacemaker. Make us committed to bringing people together instead of destroying the bond of fellowship. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. We're also going to pray remembering the, the, the nations. We're praying for national unity. I don't know what country you are that is represented here on this call, but call out the name of that country. Amos 3, 3 says, how can two walk together unless they are agreed? We are praying for national unity, that the love of Christ will begin to repair, 
repair nations divided by racial, political, religious differences, and all manners of tensions, that the love of Christ will begin to repair, repair all the brokenness in each nation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that we as believers, we will be the pace setters. We will set the pace in the name of Jesus Christ. We will be exemplary in our demonstration of love to one another because by this shall men know that we are his disciples. By this shall men know and have a template to follow that our nations will be united again. That will be united in purpose, will be united in heart, will be united in vision to accomplish the goals for the benefit of all its constituents in the name of Jesus. Amen. And lastly, we want to look at worship because worship brings down the presence of God. We are creating an atmosphere for the unleashing of kingdom power. Worship brings down the presence of God. What you seek is the manifestation of his power, but you will draw his attention through worship. You will draw his attention through worship. Second Chronicles 20 verse 22 says, as they began to sing and praise, what did the Lord do? He sent ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were what? Invading Judah. And they were defeated. Invading Judah. Huh. When you are threatened, worship. When you are threatened, worship. Even if it has to be sacrificial. Even if you don't feel like it. Hebrews 13, 15 reminds us that by him, therefore, let us offer a sacrifice of praise to God continually. Continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Continually. Continually. We continue to offer the praise to God even when it's sacrificial. Because God has asked us to do so. And we can see what he does when we praise him. His presence comes down. Psalm 23 verse 3 says, Therefore we joy. We joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. The salvation we need, the deliverance we need, the breakthrough we need, the whatever it is that we need, we will draw it with joy. <laughs> let us pray 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 that father ask father no matter what may come our way this year no matter what the forces might be no matter what is threatening us this year help us never to lose joy help us to guard our praise diligently because we know when we worship you your presence comes down worship worship changes us changes our attitude towards the, towards the situation. Worship unties your hand to move, to move in accordance to your will in that threatening situation. So help us, oh God, to guard our hearts with all diligence. Help us, oh God, to guard and protect our joy with all diligence because we want to carry this atmosphere. This atmosphere, we are creating an atmosphere of your power. We are ready for the unleashing. So Lord God Almighty, help us to daily walk in joy. No matter what comes our way this year, no matter what comes the way of your church this year, help us, oh God, never to lose our joy. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 We're praying now. We want to go into unleashing kingdom power. Romans 18 verse 19. I love it so much. For all creation is waiting eagerly for that future day, which is now in the name of Jesus, when God will reveal who his children really are. <laughs> we are becoming, sisters. We are becoming. <laughs> By the time God <laughs> begins to manifest his power, 
in us and through us, we ourselves will be shocked at who we are becoming. We are yet to attain the full measure of Christ. The world is on tippy toes. They are in anticipation of what God is about to do. What are they waiting for? It's the unleashing of kingdom power. It's the unleashing of kingdom power. <sighs> when the Holy Spirit dropped, dropped this in my heart, I was just shouting. Because unleashing kingdom power is in the everyday routines. Everyday stuff. Everyday stuff. Everyday stuff. Daily obedience. The daily obedience accumulates into something powerful. We look at the pattern of the Red Sea. Oh, Moses. The Lord used him to part the Red Sea. But he began with the weaving of a basket. His mother, Jochebed. When Moses' life was threatened, she could no longer hide him. She got creative, unleashing kingdom power. She wove a basket, applied tar, made it waterproof, placed it in the Nile. Unleashing God's power, Miriam, his sister, was positioned yet again, unleashing God's power. The wisdom she had to respond to Pharaoh's daughter, again, unleashing God's power, right? Living in, living, living in, in, in Pharaoh's household, exposure to everything that he needed to be exposed to was unleashing God's power. Plague after plague after plague was unleashing the kingdom power cumulating to the pattern of the Red Sea. So it is in the everyday routines. I thought also of the feeding of the 5,000. It began with the boy that had too much to eat, five loaves and two fishes. I thought about like, there's no way a boy, a boy can, can eat five loaves. I mean, he, he clearly packed more than enough for himself, but was too little in the eye of humans to feed that crowd. Obedience, obedience, obedience. Philippians 2.12 says, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to obey, to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose, in order to fulfill his good purpose. God is at work in us. In a stepwise fashion, we obey more and more and more each day. More and more and more each day. We're going to pray. Let us pray. Second Timothy tells us the whole Bible has been given to us by inspiration from God and is useful. It's useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It straightens us out and helps us do what is right. If we are to walk in kingdom power daily, we are to feast, feast on God's word daily. We obey more and more each day. We obey more and more each day. We unleash power more and more each day. It's from one obedience to the next. Let's pray. Say, Father, guide us into all truth. Give me the desire. You are the one that works and will in us to fulfill your own purpose. Give me the desire, the desire to obey, the desire to study your truth. For you know the way to the place where I am going. Come and be my light and my direction. You knew the way. You knew where you were taking the Israelites and you were unleashing your power, starting from the everyday routines, cumulating into the ultimate and display of your power and even much more after that lord god almighty the grace to be diligent in studying your word in immersing ourselves in the truth of who you are so that daily our manifestation would be kingdom power daily our manifestation would be 
would, would be miracles and signs and wonders that we do not despise the everyday routines. We do not despise the days we're able to pray, to sing, to dance, to read, to study. We do not despise those little seemingly insignificant phone calls, seemingly insignificant talents and giftings that you have placed in our hands. But you will encourage us, oh God, to work more on it every single day, Holy Spirit. Help us, dear Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now we're going to pray. Secondly, kingdom power. We're talking about unleashing kingdom power. Kingdom power is unleashed through revelation. Luke 2, 25 to 27 says, Now there was a man in Jerusalem named, named Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. He had an expectation in his heart. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. This same Holy Spirit had revealed to him that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord Jesus Christ. The same Spirit gave him a word. By revelation, he will not see death before his eyes, physical eyes, will see the Lord Jesus Christ. And that same Spirit led him into the temple courts on the day that Jesus was brought in. Revelation. Kingdom power is unleashed through revelation. Do you think, I was just thinking about it. Do you think if he, if he had a headache on, on one of the days he was waiting, do you think he feared death? He would have feared death? No, because of the of revelation. God had promised him that you are not going to die until your expectation has been met. It, it was plain as day. So it doesn't matter if there was war, famine, physical illness, any kind of financial hardships, no matter what was going on in his life, the word of God was clear and sure and revealed unto him what, what, what God was going to do and what God was, what was going to happen to him. So we act according to what we have received. We act according to what we have received. What we see governs our behavior. To so other people, it might be madness because they did not see it. It was not revealed unto them. So don't worry if two or three people are not you know, corroborating or encouraging you or saying things the way you're saying it, right? So what has been revealed about your destiny, about the church, about the nations, about your marriage? What, it doesn't matter how long it's taken. If God has said it, it is done. It is settled. We're going to pray. So it's not for us to be running after things. Let me quickly throw this in there. First Timothy 1.18. It says, Timothy, my son, I am giving you this command in keeping with the, in keeping in line with the prophecies once made about you. So that by recalling, recalling them, you may fight the battle well. Unleashing kingdom power. When you recall what has been said, you know how to hit, hit the ground with your knees in prayer. When you recall what has been said, you don't back down at the, at the, at, at the face of um, obstacles or opposition. You recall what has been said and you move forward. You move forward. We're going to pray. Ephesians 1.18 says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that he may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of his glory in his inheritance in the saints. Simple prayer, Lord, open my eyes. Open the eyes of your church to the incomparably great power that is available to us to do your will. The Bible is there. We look, we see the will. Now we need our eyes to be open. Now we need the eyes to be open. Now we need to know what to do. We need to know how to do it. We need to know when to do it. We need to know with whom to do it with. We need eyes that are open for fresh revelations. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, open the eyes of your church to see the incomparably great power available to us to do your will. Available to us to do your will. Your word says the life of, it, the, the, life, um, of the flesh is in the blood. The life of, of a community, it is in the church. It is where the presence of God dwells. It's where the believers are. The life of a business of, of an institution, of the educational system, of whatever it is, fill in the blank. It is in those that are carrying the kingdom power 
and unleashing it in every single day routines, in every single day obedience. So our eyes must be open. The eyes of the church must be open in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So let's just quickly pray. Sometimes we feel powerless, lacks the Lord. Please open our spiritual eyes. Open our spiritual eyes to grasp and see things clearly, things that we have not seen before. Open our spiritual eyes so we will have a new level of faith. Simeon's faith was unshakable because his eyes had seen. It had been revealed unto him what is to come. So it doesn't matter what is happening now. He was looking ahead to what is to come. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, help us, oh God, to look ahead. Open up our eyes. Give us an anchor scripture. Give us something to hold on to so that when we are, we can recall them and we are ready to fight this battle well, this war against our souls in the mighty name of Jesus. And very lastly, lastly, let us pray. Let us pray. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 says, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed seed in a good field. Anyway, let me summarize. There's no time. Um, we know the parable of the wheat and the parable of the tares. We know what happened. The tares should have been pulled out, but the instruction was no, wait until, you know, the Lord of harvest comes. And then Mark 4 tells us also that the kingdom of God is like a man who casts good seed upon the soil. We don't know how it grows. We don't know how it is, but the responsibility is to cast the seed upon the soil. So kingdom power is in sowing good seeds not necessarily pulling tears. Anybody can pull tears. Anybody can destroy it, but it takes great power and discipline to build. So no matter what is going on around us, let us make a commitment today to keep sowing good seeds. Sowing good seeds. Ask that the Lord will raise up a new tribe, a new people, a new people with a doggedness to sow good seeds that we may reap a kingdom harvest. No matter what is going on around us, we will continually sow good seeds of love. No matter how unlovable that person is, we will continually sow good seeds of excellence, no matter how difficult it may be. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. We thank you because you are the God that you are preparing each and every one of our hearts to walk into your kingdom power, unleashing it every day. We bless your holy name again for a time of prayer for the church and the nations. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Good morning, everyone. My name is Tutu Aladesiru, and I'll be leading prayers for the persecuted church in Yemen. Um, just the background, Yemen, the president of Yemen is Abdrabu Mansour Hedi. They have a republic government and the predominant religion is Islam. Um, there are over 30 million people, but they only have three, an estimated 3,000 Christians in Yemen. Um, they have a, they are going through extreme persecution. Um, for now, it's in Yemen, it's impossible for you to admit, you know, for any any Christian in Yemen to publicly admit admit that they are Christians or that they have converted to Christianity because they can face the death penalty. Um, according to UNICEF, Yemen is the largest humanitarian crisis in the world, especially for children and um, according to Open Doors, about 13 Christians are killed every day in Yemen just because they are followers of Christ. So this morning, I want us to come together and begin to pray for the country of Yemen. Let us first thank God for the country of Yemen. Let us thank God for the people in Yemen, how God has kept them till this time, despite everything that they are going through. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for the people in Yemen. We thank you for all, everyone, for, for adults, for children. We thank you, O oh God, for this once in Yemen, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, today, let's begin to pray for God's peace to reign in Yemen. The Bible says in Psalm 122, verse 6 to 8, that we should pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Today, we put Yemen in it. We pray for the peace of Yemen. We pray that those who love you will be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my family and friends, I will say 
peace be within you. So this morning, let us begin to pray. Father, we lift up Yemen before you. We speak peace over, over the country of Yemen in the name of Jesus. We pray, oh God, that for all of us who love Yemen, we pray, oh God, that for, that you cause there to, for, for your love to secure Yemen in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray God's peace within the walls of Yemen in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for God's security. We pray that God's angels will arise upon the country of Yemen in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, even for the sake of our brothers, our sisters, our Christian brothers and sisters that live in Yemen, Father, we speak peace. We declare your peace over Yemen in the mighty name of Jesus. For the sake of the righteous in that land, we declare your peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Also in Yemen, there are secret believers because they cannot um, declare their faith openly. So they meet secretly. Let us begin to pray for these ones that even as they meet, as they gather, that God will give them wisdom and discernment in the mighty name of Jesus as they gather daily. The Bible says in Acts 2 verse 47 that the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Let us begin to pray for these ones. Father, we pray, oh God, we lift up the secret believers in Yemen. Father, as they gather, we pray for your wisdom in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that your wisdom will fill their hearts. We pray that these ones will be discerning in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, even as they meet, we pray, oh God, that you will continue to add to their numbers in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray for uncommon wisdom, even for them to be able to attract more Christians in the mighty name of Jesus. That Lord, as these ones gather each day, oh God, I pray, Lord, that you will add to their numbers those that have been saved in the mighty name of Jesus, because your word declares that, that it's not your will that any should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of you. So Lord, I pray, oh God, that as this ones gather, oh Lord, you will give them the wisdom even to attract other believers in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you'll continue to increase the number of Christians in Yemen in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for a hunger after righteousness. We pray that you'll cause people, oh God, to begin to hunger after righteousness in the mighty name of Jesus. And as they hunger, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you will draw them unto the Father. Because God was says, no one can come to you except your spirit draws them near. Holy Spirit of God, we pray this morning that you will draw men unto the Father. We pray you will draw women unto the Father. We pray that you will draw children unto the Father in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And let us also pray there are people, there are missionaries that are risking their lives to provide support for, for Christians in Yemen. Let us pray that God will keep them safe in the mighty name of Jesus. As this ones risk their lives, we pray that God will keep them safe, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for missionaries. We pray for, 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 for support groups, men and women that are risking their lives daily, able to provide support for Christians in Yemen. Father, we pray that you will keep them in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you will watch over them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Lord, let's begin to pray, even for those that are persecuting Christians in Yemen. God's word declares in Ezekiel 33, 11, that as surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their wicked ways and live. Turn from your evil ways. Why will you die, people of Israel? Let us begin to pray for these ones because we know that it is God's will for, for their hearts to be turned to Christ. So Father, we pray, oh God, even for those persecuting Christians in Yemen, we pray, Lord, that you will draw their hearts to you, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for repentant hearts for these ones in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, oh God, that your Holy Spirit will, will convict these ones, oh God, even of their wrongdoing and draw them unto the Father in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says that in Matthew 9, 37, 
that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Let us pray for the Lord of the harvest to send out workers in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray that God will, will that you know God will send laborers in the name of Jesus. That these same ones, and we have a precedent in the Bible. Saul was persecuting the Christians, but at the end he became he was converted and he began to speak you know for Christ. Let us pray that there will be a, a massive conversion in Yemen. That all these people that are persecuting Christians, that are killing Christians, that their lives will turn around in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, oh God that even as you converted um, Saul of Tarsus to Paul the Apostle, we pray that you will convert the hearts of all these ones that are persecuting Christians. We pray, Lord, that you will touch their hearts by your spirits in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare in the name of Jesus that the hearts of these men and women will be turned to you in the name of Jesus. Let us pray even for the families of believers who have been murdered, for their, for, for, because they are Christians. Let us pray that God will comfort their families, that God will heal their hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says in Ephesians 4 verse 31, that let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away far from you along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave him. Let us lift up these families that God will, let's pray that God will give them the grace to forgive the people that have murdered their family members in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray, oh God, that for, for your grace upon the lives of every family that has lost a loved one in Yemen, we pray, oh God, that they will be able to forgive, that they will, they, 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 they will read their hearts of bitterness in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you will strengthen them in the mighty name of Jesus, that they will have nothing but love, even for the ones that have persecuted their loved ones in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for uncommon grace, even for the Christians in Yemen. We pray, oh God, that your uncommon grace will rest upon them, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, the spirit of love, the spirit of forgiveness in the mighty name of Jesus, that these ones will not repay evil for evil, but they will love at all times in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for this morning. We thank you even for the, the, the grace that you have given us, even to stand in the gap on behalf of the, the country of Yemen and on behalf of the people. Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, this morning we pray that you will unleash your power in Yemen in the name of Jesus, that even though it is declared as the largest humanitarian crisis, we pray for a turnaround in the land of Yemen in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, oh God, that there will be that this land will be restored in the name of Jesus, for your name's sake. Lord, we pray that you have mercy upon the country of Yemen in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for the children. We pray for the women. We pray for the men. We pray for the young adults that, Lord, you will cause there to be a restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, unleash your power. Let your kingdom come let your kingdom come. We pray that you will rule and you will reign in the affairs of Yemen in the name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you because we know that you are able to do exceeding, exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask or think or imagine. We thank you for your power that is at work within us. We thank you for the power that you will unleash in the land of Yemen. Father, we give you praise this morning, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have interceded. Amen. Amen and amen. Wow. Amazing. Thank you so much, uh, Tutu. Thank you for leading us so passionately in the prayers for Yemen. The Lord will honor every one of us as we continue to stand in the gap for these nations. God always looks for a man to stand in the gap and to intercede. And today we thank God that EPR has interceded for Yemen and everything that we have declared so shall it be in the name of Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> I really, really was so blessed this morning by the prayer session led by uh, dear Titi Olubaju. Wow. There was so much that was shared there. I believe by God's grace, this is one of those that 
um, you know, I can't wait for us to put it up um, so we can continue to pray through it. Truly, we're in a season of his power. And I just want to encourage somebody this morning. I felt so strongly in my spirit. Because we know this year is a year of illumination. Um, and because of, you know, the word that the Lord gave to us in Holy Ghost Tower, it just confirmed it. You know, I don't know who might be on the call today, but there is, you know, maybe a situation around your life or something that's bringing strife. I want to encourage you this morning that sometimes you may quote unquote seem to be like the fool, so to speak. But God will honor you. When the Lord wants to bring a major blessing, the enemy tries to bring confusion, strife, um, to get you out of the presence of God. It might not be you today. It might be something is setting up, coming your way just before your breakthrough, just before you're meeting whoever God has planned for you to meet. You know, um, sometimes even your helper, the enemy will want you to fight and be at strife with your helper. We're in a time of kingdom manifestation and promotion. I pray God will give us wisdom. Thank you, Titi. So blessed this morning. So, so blessed. And I want to say a huge thank you to everyone that has um, joined the call this morning on Zoom. We're triple excited. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Nina just shared a beautiful word, you know, that she was actually feeling discouraged today. And I use you, Nina, as a point of contact for anybody um, you joined today, you were not even in the mood. You just, you just logged on, but God honors it. And I really felt it so strongly that God, we're in a season of reward. May God encourage your heart, sisters. You know, even the prayers that we pray for persecuted church, it's when we get to heaven, you will understand the impact of what you've done and what you've continued to do. Because I believe strongly that the spirit of God is channeling those prayers and using it um, and bringing change into those nations. And we know that God would um, perfect all these things, even in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you so much again, everyone. Um, as you know, this is Esther's preparation room. Um, oh, just before we go on, um, I know one of our sisters, had sent a message um, for us to please pray. Please bear with us. I'm sorry this morning um, that we've gone off um, by a little bit. Please, please, please bear with us. I just feel strongly that we should do that. Uh, please join us. For those who are on our Telegram, um, um, and thank you for the link is there. If you're not on Telegram, please join us because we use that platform to pray, to intercede. We're in, um, for Mrs. Um, Taiwo Ogin. Um, we're praying she's in a critical um, um, medical situation and we believe that the Lord will do a great thing. And if you can join me this hour, Father, in Jesus' name, we come together as your daughters and we come together according to your word that says whatsoever two or three of us shall agree upon concerning anything that it will be done. Lord, we thank you because Lord, in the name of Jesus, we stand that every disease, every affliction, every sickness against Mrs. Taiwo Ogi, we speak that in the name of Jesus, that it is lifted in this hour. We speak forth in the mighty name of Jesus, that wherever she may be, let the power of the Holy Spirit come upon her. As we all join together with the mighty amen, wherever we are, that she is healed right now in Jesus' name. That she rises up from her sick bed in the name of Jesus. That the power and the strength of the Lord comes upon her right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless your name, O oh God. As we have prayed, we thank you that we will hear a great testimony for Mrs. Taiwo again, in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless your name. We pray that the mercy of God will prevail. The mercy of God will prevail and release and bring her forth from every deadly disease. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, sisters. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, please, well, you know, as prayer warriors, please let's not be, you know, tired. Let's just um, take one more prayer point um, for a friend. Uh, I also have a request. Bumi said, I have a request for a friend's husband who has a bleeding in the brain. Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, you called Esther's preparation room as an altar unto you, oh God. And by your mercy and by your grace, we have been on this altar consistently week in, week out, oh God. Father, we thank you for you've assured us, oh God, that we're in a time of miracles, signs, and wonders. Therefore, we lift up Bumi's friend's 
husband, oh God. And we speak in the name of Jesus collectively. Let the bleeding cease. Let the bleeding cease. Let the bleeding cease. Let it dry up right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, we pray that right now, everything that is causing a bleed seals up in Jesus' mighty name. We speak for that complete healing power of God, that the finger of the Almighty will touch him right now. For I, the word says, I am the God that he let thee. Father, heal him in a place so critical that even human doctors cannot reach. Father, do what only you can do. Let there be a testimony, O oh God. Let the angels of God surround him where he is right now. And we speak for complete healing, complete wholeness as he rises out of the bed of affliction in the name of Jesus, that all the glory may be to you, O oh God, in Jesus' name mighty name we pray and we continue to thank you oh god for any of our sisters who may have had a covid virus we speak to everyone we pray complete healing over them over their families affliction will not arise over our families i speak for complete wholeness that from a molecular cellular level everyone cells come alive come alive come alive come alive in the name of jesus finally we want to thank you oh god that in epr we do not have to cry we do not lose anybody we don't take it for granted this week has been tough for our sisters in Texas, Houston, Dallas, and all that environment, or even those in very cold areas, but we know how challenging that has been. We want to thank you for your grace, for your mercy. Father, Lord, your daughters who are serving, some of them are on this prayer call, serving continuously, oh God, I pray you continuously keep us. Let there be a, a restoration of anything that has been lost. We speak for that this week. We are blessed. The, the, the power of God rests upon us, and the Lord will keep us and other families that we don't know but may be suffering. We ask for your strength and your succor to come upon them. Even in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. And thank you for joining us in prayers. Thank you. What you do is powerful. What you do is powerful. So we bless God for that. As most of us know, I don't know if there's anybody who this is your first time. We really want to say thanks for joining us. Please feel free to raise your hands up using the raise hand feature or you can send a message to, to us here so somebody from the team can get in contact with you. Um, like we said before, if you haven't had a moment to, just scroll up in the chat. There's a link to join us on Telegram. That's where some of the prayer points come through. Please feel free to use it. You have a job interview. You just want someone to stand with you. Things are not may not be going as well. Just reach out and say, ladies, stand with me in this place, stand with me with this family, whatever the case may be, or you're like, I just need someone to talk to, you know, please reach out to us amongst us here in the leadership body that if you need anyone to call stand with you no matter what we don't want anyone to be in epr and you are ever in a situation you need someone to call upon that's why we are, you, are, you are here you must never feel that you are alone by his grace and mercy god will help all of us to be helpers of destiny to each other in jesus name amen i just want to encourage us um to join command the week is our next prayer session is going to be on monday 5 a.m. British Standard Time, 12 midnight Eastern Standard, and 6 a.m. West African Time. It's been phenomenal. We're no longer using Zoom, so we're now live on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at Esther's Preparation Room. Join us in those confessions. We are using those pl these platforms um, to prepare people as we begin to reach out more and more outside of even the body of Christ. And we're already seeing the testimonies of people joining us from online who have never been a part of EPR, just saying that, oh, who are these people? And they are joining. So please, let's keep pushing. This is the new season of evangelism, reaching out to people from a global perspective. We're praying for Yemen. We're praying for, you know, some countries we may not be calling, Vietnam, Sri Lanka, um, Zambia, um, I coast, Russia, you know, um, Denmark, from all over the world, um, Uruguay, we believe that this YouTube platform, these social media platforms, God will enable us to reach out to the world. So please, let's be a part of what God is doing. I'll just quickly run through the next slide because of time. I want to just focus on the EPR Women's uh, Professional Network meeting. Oh my, this is going to be a power pack session. It's today, a couple of hours. Um, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard, 5 p.m. British Standard, and 6 o'clock West Africa. I'm sure you're used to some of our timings by now. How to strengthen your grits. This is so, so important. The level of 
blessings and promotion. I'm not saying this to tingle your ears. That is coming will be amazing. Amazing. First of all, I just want to say I love this slide. I mean, you guys are just on top of this branding and everything just color coded. <laughs> you have the prayer team and the women's professional network, and you know, everything just ties in like it, we did also with the Leadership Institute. I'm so proud of the work you guys were all doing. EPR is going to the next level. The only thing I want to ask, there are over 40 of us on this call. If we just make an effort, if every woman here just please make an effort to say, you know what, let me just tell five of my girlfriends, just go to one of those your WhatsApp groups and just say, ladies, this is one session I don't want you to miss. Get ready. We're going to be talking about some practical steps. It's going to be interactive. Can I ask, let all of us try. Go into Instagram, Take go to Esther's preparation room, take that forward arrow button, click on it to bring up your Instagram contacts. I did it the other day, just send, send, send. Let me to receive it. If I receive 10, I'll know it, right? Because I know there are at least 10 ladies here that I'm your friend on Instagram. Send it, when, when you click to all of us, that means I should get it at least 10 times. Let's send it to different people. Let's encourage people, sisters. This is the new way through which we're able to preach and minister the gospel. Some will hear by saying in the morning, come and pray. Some will hear in the afternoon by saying, come and, you know, um, be a part of, um, um, of, of this um, professional network. So please don't forget, we're a professional women's business network. Any lady in a career, any lady that has a business, any woman that wants to take her ministry to the next level, you don't want to miss this session. Please, if you haven't registered, please register. It helps us as we plan for our Zoom um, capability. So we won't know how many people are coming. And like I said, if you can make the effort to make sure you send to a minimum of five ladies, when we all finish, can we all put it on our WhatsApp Insta story? I love the way they did the four, you know, there are four different um, mini flyers, you know, the first one, then the flyer for Lola, our speaker, for Laka, our speaker, and a summary. Let's make it all very interesting. And God will bless us as we push, push, push this message out on all our social media platforms. Thank you so much, ladies, for, for doing that. God bless you tremendously. Um, I don't know if there's, um, uh, um, okay, fantastic. Our uh, KIB um, foundation, we are actively um, um, in our fundraising. I'd like to just speak a little bit about this. Can I ask um, if, you know, we can just, I just, there's one or two activities we want to do. I know most of us have been such a blessing. What we're asking for is there's some steps we would like you to take to help us push it. We're trying to get 100 blankets in 100 days. 100 blankets in 100 days. Well, a couple of pictures of the first blankets that were being done. The first 10 blankets are being sewn right now, and being completed. It's going to be shipped from Michigan to University of Ibadan, where we are currently waiting. We have a pediatrician consultant waiting with us. University of Ibadan is the first pilot project. We have about five hospitals in Nigeria. There is a huge testimony of what the KIB team um, led by uh, Dr. Nika Shreka has been doing. We have a couple of hospitals ready to go. There is a child that maybe that child is scheduled to be born, maybe in June, July, that may come premature in April, that you never know that it is your donation of one one blanket, that child may stay alive because of one thing you do. Sisters, as God blesses you, for some people, I know you can do two or three. For some people, you can say, Lord, I'm going to use this to sow into my own unborn child's life. That Lord Almighty, this is my covenant with you. That if I can keep somebody's baby alive, I sign a covenant that my children and my children's children will never lack help. There are things that you do as a covenant before God. If you go back in the Bible, the Bible is filled with covenants. And we'll talk a bit more about this next week and some of the things that we're doing. This is something big the Lord has given to us. And sometimes, you know, when these things come, you're like, ah, Lord, how we do this thing? But it will show us what to do. So we're trusting God that, you know, next week we can plan our schedule so we can just give about 10 minutes to discuss what we want to do going forward and how everybody can be a part of it. So thank you so very much. And thank you for all your giving. Thank you for being a blessing. We continue to support the persecuted church. May God continue to help us. Thank you for all the ladies that sow after the prayer meetings, after Holy Ghost hour, you know, ladies um, sow through into EPR during after their birthday prayers. God bless you as you do this thing. It's not about the amount, it's about the faithfulness. And we thank God because this ministry is literally, we're not just a nonprofit, we're literally sustained by the giving of everybody. 
and God has kept us for the last eight years. And we know he will continue to see us through. So please thank you. This is a fertile ground. And don't forget, don't forget, please don't forget to use um, uh, Amazon Smile as you order from Amazon without doing anything else, just by selecting KIB, you will be a blessing to us. Thank you so much. Again, sincere apologies is taking it much longer than we thought, um, but thank you for the sacrifice. Thank you for the time that you've um, given in the place of prayer. The Lord will honor you and bless you. I look forward to a fantastic time today at five o'clock British Standard and 12 and six, 12 Eastern and six um, West Africa. Invite, invite, invite friends. Put it on your WhatsApp group, ladies. Let's put it on our social media. What are you waiting for? Are you here? And once we go live, just you know, let everybody know we're live. We're live. Join now. Let's do that. And I'm looking forward to an exciting time. And then we'll catch up again on Monday on Command the Week. God bless you, sisters. Have a beautiful weekend. Bye-bye.